I was a kid, you know, growing up in New Jersey, I was the youngest, only boy. I had two older sisters that were super into soccer. Nobody wanted to be the, uh, the goalkeeper, so I would hop in net and I would just, you know, face hundreds of shots. I, I sort of just did it for fun. And I played football, basketball, and baseball. And then when I got into high school, I decided that being five foot four and 100 pounds probably wasn't a recipe for success on the football field. You know, I, I changed over, back over to soccer, hopped in goal, it sort of came naturally to me, but it still I just did it for fun. And then uh, it wasn't until 2010, that World Cup in South Africa, that just launched my interest in the sport. That made me really want to get into soccer. I was a good baseball player, I was a good basketball player. There was something about being a goalkeeper specifically that was such a unique challenge. There's 22 players on the field, there's only two goalkeepers, you know, it's a small percentage, you're a unique person. And having that, that sort of control on a sport as a goalkeeper uh, is super, super unique and that, that was the draw and, and that constant chase for perfection. My dad had emailed the uh, coaches at Fairfield and said, hey, we're gonna be you know, at this Massapequa tournament. They were going there to watch another player. And they happened to have time to come watch my game. My goalkeeper coach there, Javier De Sima, he, uh, he was at the game and, and he said, he, he always said, I, I just saw something there. You know, we saw a Matt that uh, didn't have the final product. He was a diamond in the rough, but we invited him to come to one of our clinics uh, he came to one of our clinics and he did quite well. I felt really confident and I don't think I made a wrong move the whole day. And that was on Saturday and on the Monday uh, I was offered a spot on the team. In terms of on the field, he's probably one of the, uh, the hardest workers I've seen. And um, when Matt first came to the fray um, as, as a freshman, um, you know, he was not too far removed from um, you know, just starting off his soccer career at high school. I failed the first time I stepped out on the field for Fairfield. Uh, I came in in the second half in a game because I earned the opportunity, and uh, I ended up as the number one play on ESPN Sports Center's Not Top Ten. Sure enough, there's a long shot bomb of a strike from you know a full on 25, 30 yards out. The cannons off the crossbar, and the way it hit the crossbar, it goes up in the air about 20, 30 feet. He turned to the goal. He tried to catch it instead of pushing it over the bar and you know, and, and it went into the goal. And they celebrate in front of the scoreboard and then it was posted on social media. And then it ran, didn't it? It ran on ESPN for a full year. The first 20 minutes of that half, I came out for crosses. I was catching them, made a couple saves. I was feeling really good. And then that happened. I felt like my world fell apart. I didn't end up playing the rest of that, that season, unfortunately. So that, that was a real, a real challenge for me. Till this day, I say, you know, any goalkeeper at this level, at college level, I don't think comes back from that. All keepers have the mistakes. All keepers, you know, let an own goal at some point. All keepers let the team down at some point. I knew I had no hesitation that Matt would bounce back from that. It's the mental fortitude of Matt that I think has made him get to where he is. We never gave up on Matt, obviously, and, and as we know, you know, his junior year was his best year here at Fairfield, but in the, he was number one goalkeeper in the nation in terms of shot, shot percentage and uh, clean sheets. To come back from those failures, to read about things about myself online and uh, what people were saying about me that didn't even know me, you know, and, and it was all great learning experiences that helped shape who I am as a person today. Um, and to be able to feel like I really earned that starting job when I was a junior at Fairfield was uh, it was just so awesome and, I, and it just it helps me move forward and not take anything for granted. I had an agent at the time who was friends with Remy Roy here at the Revs. I think they're both Canadian, I don't know, some sort of friends along the way. So I got a call from a friend of mine who was an agent at the time. He told me he had this kid from Fairfield University. We ended up needing a, another goalkeeper to come in the preseason. So 
I give him a call, I said, look, if Matt wants to come, you know, we'll bring him in. And I was able to get a 10 day trial here in New England. So my first thoughts are like, okay, you know, third goalie, you know, a young kid out of college. I wasn't ready for what was required for me in terms of uh, playing with the ball at my feet. I just, I could not pass. And I wore cleats that were like a little too big for me. He couldn't kick a ball 15, 20 yards and he had size maybe 15 or 16 shoes, and they were probably two sizes too big. You know, the first day in preseason, we shrink this, the size of his cleats by one and a half. You know, he went from a 15 to a 13 and a half. I'm not saying that helped his kicking right away, but it definitely improved it a little bit. For him, it was working on it every single day, trying, you know, fix something that, you know, there's a weakness in your game. And so he would stay after and work with Remy. You know, he got better every day. He was, you know, he was very eager to train all the time. The first year I had him, we had a deal with Richmond where he would train with us for the, for the whole week. And then on the Friday, he'd fly to Richmond, play with them for the weekend, get two games, fly back on the Sunday. You could see it in training every day that he was capable. It's just whether or not it would translate into a game. You know, I, I learned a lot about myself in 2018 because I started the season off strong and I was playing really well and people started talking about me and recognizing me and, and saying all these things. And I sort of got caught up in all that. Mentally, I was torched. I didn't know how to deal with that. I didn't feel like I had anybody I could talk to about it. And, um, and from there, my form just continued to drop. I got benched and I spent seven games on the bench. I played the last game of the season, got a clean sheet. So I finally got the starting job back. We lost in 2019, we lost 5-0 in Chicago. All the changes happened after that. Well, when I first took the job, uh, it, it was an unknown who the goalkeeper was gonna be here because uh, they had rotated keepers, uh, I would think in the first half of 2019. And then the first game I got to see Matt play I was sitting here up in uh, one of the boxes and he, uh, he got a red card foul on Wayne Rooney. I'd be lying to you if I, if, if I said that we thought we had a real good one in Matt Turner when I, when I moved in and, and I, I think Kevin would probably tell you the same. In comes uh, Kevin Hitchcock and he just like totally opened my mind to a whole different side of what it means to be a, a goalkeeper coach. And he picked up very early what I was doing, what we was doing in training and he was taking it into training games and he was taking it into matches. A very, very quick turnaround. And then Bruce came in and uh, he came up to me and said, uh, who should I play in goal? And I went, Turner. For me, he was, he was the best, he was the best goal, goalkeeper I've seen for a long, long time. And I've worked with a lot of goalkeepers. It's crazy to think about that stuff, you know, it really is. It's, um, I think back to the, the moments that, you know, we've sort of touched upon here that sort of defined who I am as a person. And um, I know that soccer doesn't define me as a person, but it's a big part of me. And um, to, to be categorized as one of those players is truly special. Well, I'm, I'm a very old fashioned coach in terms of uh, how I analyze goalkeepers. Uh, I think the, the number one job of a goalkeeper is to so stop shots, keep the ball out of the back of the net. And that's Matt strength. He's, he's an excellent shot blocker. Every day, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I, I can't praise, praise him high enough. He's, he's come so far in such a short time. Orlando's a place that I hate playing. The fans are right on top of you. They're throwing beers at you and saying not nice things about your family. And so we get there in the playoffs and I'm, I'm a little nervous because I'm like, nothing good ever happens to me in Orlando. And I'm, I just was feeling, I was feeling the nerves. And we go up 2-0 real fast, just similar how we did to, to how we did in the previous round. And then the disaster happens. Right to Junior Urso, deflection, deflection in the goal. Now it's 2-1. The crowd's getting into it. It's a totally different game. And then, you know, they get the penalty shout. And I'd done my, I'd done my homework with Hitchy. Homework. I do a lot of homework on penalties. We get scouting reports every single week, plot sheets on how many times they've gone to this specific spot, where they've gone recently, and then we go back and watch the video. He understands what I'm telling him, 
and he, he bought into it straight away. And I just knew, I don't know what it was, I just like had this feeling that, that he was gonna go to my right. I knew that I was gonna wait as long as possible before I was gonna dive to my right. He finally made his final approach to, to swing his leg. My goal was to dive to the post, it was a little behind me. Brandon does a great job of coming in and cleaning up the rebound. That game sort of deflated after that because that was their big opportunity. We're not going to get it right 100%, but we go on the majority of what we're thinking the, the forward's doing. And he gets it right probably 90%. And when he gets to the right side, he's always going to save it because of the technique he's using. Luckily, the first time I got called up, I was, I was in New Jersey, I was with my family. Um, so I sort of went into the other room, I came back and my mom and dad were like, like, what's wrong? You know, I'm like, I just got called into the national team. And you know, it was like just this big moment. It was like a father and son moment. You know, I was really proud for him because this, I mean, he's come a long way in a short time. A lot of people said he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that. He's proved all of them wrong. It's great for him. Like I say, he's, he's earned it. And you know, still, still, I, I, I think he still has a lot to grow and he hasn't reached his full potential. Yet. I just hope that I can continue to represent my country because that, that rush, that feeling uh, is such an honor. The English Premier League would be super special. So any stadium in that in that league would just be a dream come true to, to walk those fields and the tunnels and the history and all that. And, and just the English culture and way of life is super intriguing to me. Like I've said to the people here, he can play Premier League easily. I've worked with a lot of top Premier League goalkeepers. And he's up there with the top three I've worked with. There's a lot more that goes into it than just desire. The timing's got to be right. It's got to make sense for both clubs. It's got to make sense for me personally. I'm not just going to go over to Europe for the sake of going over to Europe. And I think that that's a, you know, something, something that factors into that decision-making process. I know at this moment, he is as good as any top Premier League goalkeeper. It's a murky you know, next two years because there's that World Cup. Play well enough that you know, they bring me at least to, to World Cup qualifiers. All the while, the Revs you know, competing for Supporter Shield and, and MLS Cup. So th those types of things over the next year and then from there being a part of that, that team that travels to Qatar 2022.